Hi, Karina here, your Lucid Living Coach. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm an intuitive, transformational life coach and astrologist, and I'm here to give you your full moon and Capricorn report. All right, full moon and Capricorn is happening on June 24th. This is at three degrees, okay, of the sun and the moon. I'm going to read the inside degrees after I'm done introducing a little bit of this. So this is the chart that I pulled for Oakland, California, and the risings will be different depending on where you live in the world. Uh, but on this chart, the sun is sitting in the 10th house and the moon is sitting in the fourth house. This is referring to our work and our home, our past, our childhood, and what is uh, how we were supported in the foundation of our childhood and how we are being viewed and seen in the world. The 10th house is our career and legacy. As you can see, Mercury is sitting here at the top with the North Node, which is a destiny point, okay? This is huge. This is really putting a focus on where we are heading now, okay? Post uh, pandemic, yeah, there's a lot still unsurety, but we've been a year kind of on delay. This 2021, we have the Saturn Uranus square, which is also slowing us down into moving into the new world. Now, uh, at the beginning of 2020, March, I posted this video, which I'm going to put the link down below, but I was just talking about how the node points were moving from Cancer into Gemini. I also talked about the Pluto-Saturn conjunction, as well as the age of Aquarius and, oh, I'm sorry, Saturn moving from Capricorn into Aquarius, which is really highlighting the Aquarian energy. And as you can see right here in this chart, Saturn is in Aquarius now, okay? The North Node is in Gemini now. And Jupiter, or I'm sorry, Pluto and Saturn were conjunct in January of 2020 at the beginning of this whole pandemic, which is the catalyst for the dismantling of the old world and the moving into the new world. So I'll play a little bit of this. Mars will enter Aquarius. So um, we're going to be more passionate about um, humanitarian efforts and getting into the community and helping and supporting one another. And then, um, and then April 3rd, it looks like Venus will enter um Gemini and she's going to be showing us in Gemini so and North Node in, Gemini. in Sagittarius which now that I'm seeing a little bit of what's going on um Gemini is short distance travel it's not foreign lands it's not foreign. and so we're already kind of seeing that um yep we didn't really have a whole lot of uh, travel in 2020. A lot of restrictions were happening. You have to have a negative COVID test and whatnot. And then, so yeah, it's going to be the reading for this this picture which you're referring to. I don't know when you when you. But that if you fast forward, and I'll leave the link below that you could rewatch this video. There's a lot of important information that has happened and is going to be highlighted for this full moon in Capricorn, which has to do with the repeat of history. And that's why astrologists and historians and scientists all look at the past in order to predict the future, in order to negate any repeating of past mistakes. Okay. And so we had in 1774, 1775, and 1776, very similar things that were happening because of the Pluto-Saturn conjunction that had happened last in the 1700s. So we, we had the smallpox, right? Pandemic or epidemic that had wiped out the indigenous people in the Spaniard quest. Okay, what had happened after that was the Continental Congress was created. So it was like the new world. So it killed off the old world and then it invited the new world to be 
born, which was the 1776, 4th of July, which is our, um, our independence into the new world. Well, this is playing out again. And this is what I've been feeling. My guides have been telling me since the beginning of 2020. And that's how come I put out a couple videos when I was getting those downloads. And it definitely looks like there is a lot changing because we, a part of the constitution is the freedom of speech. However, we are being censored and we are being controlled on the World Wide Web platforms because there are certain ownerships of uh, certain uh, databases and platforms on the internet. However, this is the new world, internet. So as far as freedom of speech, I feel like that has been limited. So this is like something that we are focused on, our freedoms, um, also uh, rebellion against authority and rules, I think, as a humanity, we're kind of at our wit's end with all the uh, fear and control and the manipulation by uh, the elitists and those in power. So I just wanted to put that out there um, because I feel like this full moon is going to be highlighting a lot of the United States as well because it's a brand new cycle. For the United States, this is happening, and I'll pull, I pulled up the chart right here. So here's the United States birth chart in here, which is the 4th of July, 1776. And we have uh, the sun is conjunct our Jupiter and our Venus, which is great for partnerships, and it's very optimistic. And our new world currencies and our money are shifting. And then the moon is in the first house, which is our self-awareness and how we do and go about um, business, okay? And how we look and we appear to others around us. Because here's, um, where's Sagittarius? Yeah, Sagittarius is the south node, okay? There is something that is, a chapter is closing there. Uh, Sagittarius is foreign lands. It is... Uh, travel, right? So this travel um, has been restricted for us. And here is the North Node, which is in the sixth house. We are focused on our healing ourself, our nation, as well as getting back into our routines and our work and our health habits. And there's something shifting here because it's on your Uranus. It's, it's, it's finally off Uranus, right? It's starting to move and oh no, it moves backwards, my bad. So this, uh, this uh, North node will be moving and it eventually will conjunct uh, United States Uranus, which is going to completely shift uh, the way that we do business and the way we work here in the United States. So yeah, that's what I'm seeing here. It looks like our North node, our natal, United States natal North node is in the eighth house in Leo and Mars is moving off of that point. So it looks like we were really, really driven to, um, you know, eighth house is other people's money too and shared resources. And maybe there's a focus or a highlight uh, that's happening there that is initiating where the United States is supposed to be heading. Maybe this is a call out to us being more independent. Uh, we are a very codependent uh, nation here where we rely on others and other people and as well as the people in it rely a lot on their government to feed us and to um, create control and um, uh, systems. Okay, so I feel like a lot of that's changing. All right, so I'm gonna get to my notes because I kind of got off track a little bit, but um, everything is meant to be said when it's meant to be said. So let's see, we have the sun and the moon square to Chiron. So here's the sun and here's the moon, and we have these red lines pointing right to Chiron in Aries. Now Chiron is the wounded healer, and I believe that it is associated with Virgo, which is rising, okay? So not only uh, Chiron, but also 
Mercury is the ruler. So it's really highlighting and healing our ego in this death and rebirth of something new in our legacy and how we run our country or how we run our lives and what it is that we are manifesting for our new legacy and career. And I'm sure a lot of us have shifted and changed in the last year during the big pandemic. We've lost jobs and maybe we furthered our education and now we are stepping into a brand new cycle in what we are and what we're meant to do here for the remainder of our lives here. Um, we are all being put on our purpose and our destiny as far as like what our legacy is and our career, what we're gonna leave behind after we go. So this may begin um you you may begin like all of us we might begin to notice in our relationships and situations arriving in our in our lives that feels a bit painful but that ultimately will allow us to see the connection between the current pain and the past pain that we've experienced so this full moon has contact with our past wounding which is chiron and our ego what we've always believed to be true because of what maybe we had experienced when we were younger okay it has a lot to do with our relationship with our authority figures at home either our mother or father or grandparents or whoever raised us this could potentially be a painful time of recollection okay a desire to do different or to create boundaries to allow more respect between our relationships with other. Now the childhood mother and father also come up because that is talking about the sun and the moon. And the moon is, is uh, ruled by uh, cancer, which is opposing it. And the sun is the masculine, which is father. And also Saturn is the father, which is retrograde right now. So it's rethinking and reliving some experiences of our relationship with our parents and our father and how we may still have some baggage to work through and transmute these darker energies and experiences into something of acceptance and moving forward with more of a healthy approach because we don't wanna keep repeating history and we wanna be able to heal and not hold on to these old energies. For example, if you experience abandonment by a parent of like, or a rejection um, from a parent, you may find that you might be more clingy or an anxious attachment, anxious attachment style in your relationship. Okay, noticing this is just something of the past that needs to be worked through and, and communicated. So what else do we have? We have moon, sex, Kyle, Jupiter, right here. And Jupiter's retrograde in Pisces. Jupiter will be moving back into Aquarius at the very end of July, the last couple of days of July and into August and the rest of the year. But this is a time when I will predict that the, the, the cryptocurrencies will start going back up. So I remember Bitcoin was really high at the very end degrees of Aquarius. And therefore it may just go right back up to the 60,000 at the end of July and August. There is going to be a lot of spikes in crypto and volati volat volatility in cryptocurrencies this summer. So excitement, um, buy wallets, low okay so you can sell when it's high let's make some money out there so the emotions are between these two planets are optimistic and a desire to connect with others and have fun so this is a really fun aspect there are feelings also that might come up of past partnerships that have not worked out like you thought but those relationships are starting to unfold and let us know the purpose of why it didn't work out and revealing so much that is needed for this evolution. 
and lessons that we have learned. All right, so the sun is trying Jupiter. Here's the sun and it's trying over to Jupiter in the sixth house just for this, this particular rising because houses are based on the rising and because I pulled it for California, that's it. Um, this is the, the feeling is more expansive and bright because Jupiter is the planet of expansion and good luck. The sun is optimism and energy. So we're feeling this new energy come about. Like we just had the mask mandates lifted. We're starting to see people's faces and smiles. We're starting to feel that energy, especially with Mars transiting Leo right here. I'm a Leo. I'm definitely feeling that forward momentum, more passion, more energy, more direction, and more sexy feeling times, you know? So this is all about letting go and be optimistic and forward momentum. A new light is upon our self-awareness and our journey thus far. We're reaching out to others in celebration for this hopeful future. Now, Uranus is in Taurus, right? Which is working on our value systems. And it's squaring over to Saturn, which is restricting the movement and the forward momentum into the new world. Because Saturn is about structures and old world systems. It's very uh, more reptilian, okay? Where it's like the old and the decrepit. Okay, old systems and old ways of doing things. Um, and this is a dance between these two planets, which is the planet of eccentricity and rebellion is having a hard conversation with the planet of restriction and time. So there are so many things that we are trying to create and manifest into this new world and this new life. But Saturn is throwing this wet blanket on top of our momentum. Okay, it's trying to understand the new world because it's in Aquarius, but it's retrograde. So it's actually like taking some steps backwards. So for example, we have a list of things to create, okay? Let's say we're creating art for our art show and our boss in our Saturn job is asking us to work overtime to get his projects done the same week. So that is an example of the Uranus Saturn square that we are experiencing all of 2021. This is also could create um, blocks for those that have intuitive, uh, artistic, and uh, jobs like artists, writers, astrologists, readers. Okay, this could be frustrating and ask us to be patient and embrace this ebb and flow that existence brings. We have a vision and, I, and an idea of what we want for the future. And in that, we would like to make action to accelerate our abundance. However, Saturn is restricting the acceleration that we desire. These two planets exactly square three times this year we had one in February, and then we just had one this Monday, which was June 14th. That was a very hard day. And then the next will be December 21st. That will be the final square until it starts letting off. So this is a very challenging energy, and we are being asked to be more flexible, more patient, more resilient, and it also is the clashing of worlds between the old world and the new world. But with this aspect, no, this change is promised. Okay, so we are all working on that. The universe is working on that for 2021. Uranus square Mars. So here's Uranus and it's squaring over to Mars and it's squaring over to Saturn. All right, so we have a strong desire to rebel against authorities and restrictions. We want to create our own rules and lives that we see fit for us. 
Now the United States chart will be highlighting our image um, evolution, evolution of our priorities or the, eval the evaluation of our prior priorities and if they are working for us. So we will be getting rid of these things that are not working for us from the old world and what may need to stay and be implemented. So the old world has some things that we love and the, some things that we don't love. So we're getting rid of the things that we don't love and we're continuing to maybe enhance the things that we do love and then inquiring them and blending them with the new things of the new world and what we're creating. So our systems, including how we ran society before the pandemic, and we're looking closely at those systems like our school system, our government systems, our value systems, how we work and what is our daily routines, what those are looking like. Back in March, I talked about the repeating of history, right? Of 1776 is underway. So I showed you the video and please click the link below and watch the whole video for yourself to get a better idea of what I am talking about. But January 2020 had initiated all this crazy change and dismantling of the old world that we're finally starting to build the new world. So Saturn is in Aquarius and it's opposing Mars. So here's Saturn in Aquarius opposing Mars in Leo. So this, this Leo and Aquarius energy might be battling okay because this could be frustrations it could be disappointments it could be angry it's really challenging energy but you can transmute it into something that is more passionate maybe passionate for debate conversation and maybe some makeup sex after right because mars is that passion and saturn is that commitment so this could just be a resistance of commitment in certain relationships that we're having. But this is all about focusing on building our networks and creating art and magic within our own lives and our relationships. And this is gonna help transmute the heavier and darker energies. There is a lot of potential for our future uh, that the universe is working on. So just allow those things to leave that aren't serving our new lives that we're trying to build, okay? So Neptune is trying Venus. Let's see, here's Neptune and it's trining over to Venus in Cancer. They're both water signs. This all has a lot to do with our emotions and our unconscious. And we're feeling more susceptible to this fantasy and the dreaming and the wish fulfilling relaxation and our desires to assist others um, to that are maybe less fortunate than us. We we are just feeling like super um, good, okay? It's like smoking a bunch of weed, right? It, you're just like in your in your little happy spot, and everything's just nice and peachy. This can leave us, however, more vulnerable to deceptions, manipulation and people taking advantage of us. So just be mindful about, about that. Now with Pluto is also opposite Venus, okay, this way. And there is a battle that's happening between the God of the underworld and the goddess of love, abundance, and uh, desire. So Pluto's creating this drama within our closest relationship. This is the dark forces are being let loose on a subconscious level. So think before feeling, acting, think before reacting, and use your higher self to navigate these darker waters and don't give in to falling for something you know is not good for you. Your intuition is key in, during this transit. So look for red flags of control and domination 
before moving safely forward in your current relationships. Now, if you've met someone within the last couple weeks, take your time, especially if you, it, and I'm saying this because if you met them during Mercury retrograde, then most likely you won't know if the relationship is gonna stick until Mercury is out of its shadow in July. Now, Mercury went retrograde on Mercury went retrograde on May 30th and it will be direct on twenty third. Wait. On June twenty third. Sorry, I'm in July. I was looking at July, my bad. Um yeah, so Mercury will be direct on the twenty second and then it will uh, be in shadow for a couple weeks after. So the shadow period is before a uh, couple weeks before the retrograde and a couple weeks after the retrograde. Okay. What's next? All right. Lastly, um, Mercury trine to Saturn. So here's Mercury and it's trining over to Saturn. So this is a good time for intellectual, concrete ideas and planning. As you can see, Mercury is at the top of the chart, which is our legacy and our career, and Saturn rules that house, and it's in Aquarius in the fifth house. But Aquarius is just about the future. It's about innovative ideas to move yourself closer to where you want to be. So working on projects will be easier. Our concentration will be stronger and sharper. And we're most likely not going to make as many mistakes as we made in Mercury retrograde. Family may be needing a little more of our attention. New friends and partners will be long lasting and making plans for big purchases regarding shares and real estate will be more beneficial during this time. So because Mercury is off the retrograde, it's just in its shadow. So we're just feeling the aftermath of the last three weeks. Um, this is a really good time to invest in stocks, cryptos, and start planning for your future uh, goals, All right? And yeah, I wanted to read the 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 three degrees in the book inside inside degrees and i will read the three degrees moon it was like really accurate there's some words that are a little iffy iffy whiffy for me so um so the the title of capricorn it's at three degrees which is this moon and um yeah is this moon is a woman sniffing pepper and sneezing violently. Attractions and repulsions, convictions, beliefs, antipathies, and judgment. Being confronted karmically with whatever you most phobically seek to run away from. Very interesting, right? Men is, um, mercilessly and ruthlessly over and again forced to come to terms with what you hate and cannot deal with. The fast and strong and hard path to get through mountains of karma and move onward. Yet each episode, every cycle of recapitulation tends to be engulfing and consuming. You must discover the lost art of taking up karmic lessons without any indulgence in self-flagellation. If you can meet it and release it, get inside of it and be done with it, the process works. If you linger over 
right and wrong, blame and praise, and swirls pull you too far under too long, the path through becomes a repetition compulsion with very little real breakthroughs. So pretty much this is saying that the past karmic cycles that we've experienced in our lives and our family cycles are being broken and it's asking us to break them. However, we have freedom of choice. So we could either listen to our new path in the new world and create abundance and love and commitment and an overall happiness and well-being or we can revert, revert back to our karmic cycles and repeat history all the fucking over again. So we have a choice. All right, now on for the announcements. And after the announcements, stick around for the card reading for this full moon in Capricorn and a personal channel message. So the an announcements are, is I'm hosting my astrology workshops once a month and next month it's going to be on july 30th let me just make sure yeah july 30th i'll be hosting the workshop so how i'm going to start doing it is if you want to buy before july 20th you will get a discount. It'll be 120 if you buy, purchase the three workshops for 120. After will be 180. Now, if you decide that you wanna do an, the workshop for August, you could buy it for 120 in July. And so that's how I will, I will work it for the next, for this summer. Okay, so I'm doing three workshops. One is the basic workshops. You're gonna learn all the basics. Uh, the zodiac signs, the houses, um, the elements and aspects. And then the intermediate will look more into uh, the deacons and more into the aspects. And then we'll have advanced astrology birth chart reading. So if you want to do it at the end of July, don't wait, get it now. I'll be hosting these in Crockett. Or if you're not in the local area in California, I will send you my PowerPoint link, just like a video like this, teaching you astrology. And it is understandable. Also, I am selling my Moldavite bracelet. I actually got tech titan too. So this one is Moldavite with two tech types, hematite, and I'm making them specifically for your astrology birth chart. So if you're interested, please go to my Instagram at lucid underscore living underscore coach. And I will post those bracelets. I even have the new moon bracelet. If you want something um, more simple, I'm a new moon baby and a eclipse baby. And I will post them on Instagram. And then I will post them on my Etsy shop, which is www.creativecommodes.com. Um, and the link is down in my description box below, but last and definitely not least, um, I'll be right. I am selling my books. Okay. Break free, break free to peace, love, and unity, which just come out this year selling for $20, as well as break free to stand in your power, selling for $15. And you could buy those on my website at www.lucidlivingmovement.com. But if you're local and you're my friend, hit me up, DM, PM me, and I will get you a copy. And uh, yeah, all right, now it's time for your reading.
All right, so I'm going to first <clears throat> pull from the Flower of Life deck. Yeah, first I like to light a candle and some sage. This is kind of a ritual that I do before readings. Candles and sage, candles and sage, and Palo Santo. So sage clears any energy prior, okay? And then any darker energies and then the palo santo kind of invites positive energy just you know inviting your angels and guides and ancestors that have our our backs those of the the good and the light okay oh i love the smell of palo all right, I think we are ready. I'm going to go ahead and shuffle this deck. And this is for the collective reading for the full moon in Capricorn. I like to shuffle them three times and then just pick the top. You are love. Create a new way to be in your life. Return to love. You have the support and love of the universe as you step through the veils of perceived responsibilities into freedom. No one has been placed upon this earth to make you happy. Just as it is not your responsibility to make anyone else happy. Your job is to fill the best that you can in every moment. Bring yourself and anyone else of the idea that we have to please others to be loved. You are so loved by the whole universe. Accept this love and feel all of your relationships deepen. Become more authentic and unconditional. You are love and you are loved. Very cool. Now I'm going to pick out of my animal spirit we'll see what animal message that we have i've been seeing uh, a lot of um, cranes and hearing my owls and a little deer but mostly cranes have been coming to me a lot like white cranes Okay, I'm going to shuffle it one more. Oh, Ooh. so two came out. We got the cheetah and the manatee. Okay, so accept the situation as it is rather than fighting to change it. The cheetah, get clear on your intention, stay focused, and move quickly to achieve your goal. I'll read the cheetah because that was the first one I heard. Stop 
deluding yourself by thinking that there isn't enough time. There are too many other things to do, or you're not up to the mission that's calling you to action. This and many other beliefs are delayed tactics that keep you from accomplishing what you're here to do. It's much too easy to play it safe by staying caught up in the mundane dramas of life rather than honoring spirit purpose for you making a run for it. The first step is to write out your intention as clearly as possible. Keep it nearby and create an appropriate affirmation that you can repeat several times over the course of a day. One that states your intention as if it has already occurred. Like, I'm so happy and grateful that money comes to me increasing quantities through multiple sources on a continual basis. Then write out a sequence of actions and steps that will help you move towards your ultimate goal. Now, when I say that, when I say that, I automatically think of things that will make that happen to be true because it's our ego trying to be right. It's great manipulation of our brain in a more positive way. Um, legs, come in, Miss Nagi, leave legs alone. Don't be shy or hesitant to think big, bigger than you've ever previously allowed yourself. Once you've set the wheels in motion by doing things, uh, by doing these steps, it's time to move, not in some frantic, hurried way, but steady and purposeful, designing much of our activity to support what you need to do. In all of this movement, once you've successfully achieved a significant piece, take a breather and look back on how far you've come. Give yourself a pat on the back with each step that's ac accomplished as a way of acknowledging your process. Go for it. So the association is focus, passion, um, self-esteem, power, grace, energy, and uh, accomplishment, being direct. All right. I was feeling called to pick out of the Divine Circus Oracle, then the Alice in Wonder. Legs is behind that curtain, and Ted used to do this. Ted and Miss Miyagi used to play this game, and now Legs and Miss Miyagi are playing this game. She's on the other side of the curtain, and, and she the dog's too scared to come to her. So he growls and barks. The Nebula Warrior. Whoa. It's card 17, which is new beginnings in relationships and a transformation. Death of old relationships and a transformation into new relationships, just based on the numerology. Oh, hi, Legs. You came through. There are advocates for love on this earth, those that are passionate defenders of the freedom or um, my right ears ringing for whoever um, needed to hear that, for all beings to grow and fulfill their divine destiny. These warriors for the soul know they can either use darkness to serve the growth of the light or allow it to consume their sense of hope trust and faith in the right outworking of the destiny of all living things. You're being initiated in the ways of, of working with darkness constructively to become a soul warrior for all living beings. Okay, this sounds familiar. That is the Pluto, the Pluto Venus opposition as well as the sun and the moon square to Chiron, right? Some things in life are worth fighting for, but how do you fight with love? How do you fight without becoming bitter, hateful, tired, disconnected from the whole reason you needed to fight in the first place? To be a warrior for love and the soul, you have to be smart. You have to know how to fight without fighting, how to use your natural darkness on this planet in a way to birth a new consciousness that is unafraid. Nebula warrior isn't afraid of the dark. She isn't interested in the rules of war established by fear loving minds. 
she creates her own rules, not based on what people want her to believe, but based on what works to keep her free and liberated and liberate the minds and hearts of all beings. She comes to you now because whatever situation needs healing in your life or in the world, you have the power to bring it. Up. If you go for the goal directly, trying to force a change, you will be putting your and considerable energy into pursuit and unintentionally set up for resistance and compulsion, which is the Uranus seven square I talked about. The stronger your energy, the more powerful this resistance will become. This is not the best way to use your power. You want your power to work for you, not against you. Creating responses of assistance and attraction, guiding rather than forcing the solution to come into being, is more effective use of your power. Then you can disempower negative influences and disarm naysayers whilst drawing to you helpers and opportunities to attain your goals, all from a relaxed, positive, and loving state of mind. You get the results without losing your tool. The best way to do this is to practice bringing yourself to a place that is calm and compassionate within. Do what you can do each day. If you cannot do something you want to do, ask for help from the universe and then let it go. When you need to rest, take it. These apparently small choices create a powerful field of magnetism to attract and increase love and light on this planet, empowering the human heart with the understanding that the truth is always very simple. The forces in the world that profit from fear instead of love will try to confuse and overwhelm you into paralysis and inaction and into worrying rather than acting. 2020, 2020, don't fall prey to that nonsense. You are a warrior of love and you will win any and every war through cool compassion and smart, simple strategy. So the healing trick for this card is I call on the unconditional love of the universe as my guide, protector and friend and witness. I now release anything or anyone trying to influence my way, me away from unconditional love and trust. Go in peace and do not return to me. I call in to my body, mind, and soul to full presence of unconditional love and empowering compassion. And I choose to give up the drama, give up the judgment and become a source of full, calm compassion for all living beings. Amen. Very, very powerful card. And I have one more oracle, which is the journey of love. I thought I'd throw love in there because uh, the Venus is involved and relationships and partnership. What are we creating? There it is. Ooh, two fell out. The first one that fell out is Sacred Convergence, 28. And Simplicity, four. So that's new beginnings. And this new beginning is creating stability in our life, okay? Saturn is about stability. This full moon's ruler is about Saturn and stability. Okay, so I'm gonna read number 28. There is a coming together happening within your body and soul, a unification of all that is within you. This is a keen to traveling to a strange land as all sorts of new sensations, not all welcome at first, begin to make themselves known to you. If you are experiencing discomfort within your own body or uncertainty and a sense of expansion, to include more of life in your thoughts and feelings, then you are conscious of this sacred convergence. It is like two worlds colliding, okay? 
If you are sensitive, you will feel it happening as an important event without necessarily having a physical situation to attribute the experience to or upon which to hang an explanation. You may also be encountering this in a very physical sense by finding yourself in situations when you, which you previously would have avoided. You may be meeting people and thrown into relationships with them, apparently more by circumstance than by your own conscious choosing. This is a meeting of you with your shadow and something to rejoice in, even if it's uncomfortable at times. Be gentle and loving with yourself and kindly seek to find the beauty in what you are learning about yourself in your interactions and experiences. You are a wise soul seeking to know yourself rather than judge others. Remember your divine perfection as you are thrilled and challenged in this time of great growth. You are guided to be curious as through traveling to a foreign land and remaining open to experiences or experiencing its treasures. This oracle holds a message for you. A deeper part of yourself is calling you forward. Any discontent, struggle, anxiety, or fear is a subconscious recognition of this. Don't worry. You are a unique plant in the divine garden. You don't have to know what plant you are in order to grow. You just need to live each day and the growth happens naturally. Then you can see over time, the beauty of your true nature revealing itself to you. It will be a revolution to be re relinquished. So there's a little poem at the bottom. From the white foam on the surface of the of blue to the mystery beneath the waves, wherever your travels may lead, may the artist touch inspire us to explore the ocean realm and celebrate the beauty as land gives way to water and water to the unknown. Wow, that was pretty potent. All right, I'm gonna move on to the tarot. What is for the oh, page of pentacles? Oops. Uh -oh. Let's see here. Oh, I'll just go in here. Okay, so the page of pentacles, it fell out reverse. So I'll go ahead and read it reverse. This is about, okay, so if it's upright, it's about manifesting financial opportunity and uh, developing your skills, right? Because this is money. This is all about money and focus on making money. But this way, maybe your, fo maybe your focus is on the wrong thing. The lack of progression, procrastination learning from your failures this is what it's all about okay so maybe it is about 
um, exploring a new project. Maybe the projects and the things and the work and the, the focus on money is just not working for us anymore. Maybe we need to switch it up or take a new approach to our work and how we work. All right, so I'm gonna roll the dice for a channeled message. Oh, the third house, the sun in the third house in Capricorn. So this is definitely a brand new beginning on how we are communicating, okay? This has to do also with our siblings and our cousins and how we communicate, how, 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 how uh, being a stable uh, foundation and, and, and someone to come to. There might be some things that we're not seeing, some emotions that we're not expressing as well. So we want to make sure that we're being open and open-minded about what we're experiencing and what we're seeing, not only in others, but within ourselves. Sometimes we, we will feel certain emotion and we're trying to block it and ignore it. But the thing is, it, it eventually will come out during a 12th house transit or a transit that has to do with Neptune. So this is um, anything that we push to the unconscious, we're just pushing back to deal with it another day. So this card is just saying to, to express yourself whether that is you think it's going to hurt someone's feelings sometimes it's just a karmic a karmic thing and Also, the five of pentacles came out, okay? This is like a beggar on the street. And this could represent some, um, some financial loss or isolation or fear around, uh, around finances and maybe our work in the world. But understand that that is only temporary and it won't be, it won't be long. You will definitely eventually recover from the financial loss and maybe the spiritual poverty, but it's about living in the moment. I'm gonna move to this deck now and then pull um, a magic, making magic card. Okay. I'll just pick the top here, the three of wands. So definitely this is a time to start on our new journey and listen to what innovative ideas that are coming to our minds and in our lives. This could be opportunities, job opportunities, new partnerships, new relationships, and new people. The sky's the limit. And we have everything that we need to make that move forward. But in this time, there are delays and there are times. So in delays, we are being asked to reevaluate, to make a plan. We are not always supposed to be in constant action because the opposite of action is inaction. And that inaction is really something that we could use for our benefit, just like sleeping, right? sleeping, we need to repair our brain and our bodies so we can fully work. And if we're not getting rest and we're not sleeping, we're going to eventually get hurt or get sick or not be able to function in our job or in our relationship. So breaks are always good. Rest is always good. And re-evaluating what we're doing so we're not repeating ourselves over and over again. So Thank you for joining. Thank you for listening. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing my videos. You are awesome, every single one of you. And if you would like a personal reading, you can go to my website or directly message me. And I hope you make this the best full moon in Capricorn. Till the next time.